Knowledge is arguably the most essential ingredient to success. Whether it's knowing a foreign language, how to cast a spell or pick a lock, or information detailing your enemy's troop movements, the more information you have, often the better off you will be. This is conventional wisdom, but is it possible that you can have too much knowledge? More than a bespectacled man in his garage, more than the greatest of the Sijic monks, or the longest lived Telvanni? Pursuit of secrets and forbidden knowledge has been the path of many aspiring men and mer seeking power, peace, or enlightenment. And for this pursuit, there is no better god to deal with than the Abyssal Cephaliarch himself, Gardener of Men, the Woodland Man, Old Antecedent, Master of the Tides of Fate and Demon of Knowledge. I am talking about no less than Hermaeus Mora himself, the Daedric Prince of Apocrypha, the Riddle Unsolvable, the Door Unopenable, the Book Unreadable, and the question unanswerable. Welcome to Fudge Muppet, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Scott, and today I offer you a cautionary tale, a warning, a stop in the road. Beware of the black books. In fact, I would go as far to say, do not read the black books. Now, of course, I'm not talking about the little gameplay buffs and bonuses that you receive from clicking a button, but rather I am talking about the in-law implications of such secret scrying, and potentially what this may have done to The Last Dragonborn. It may be worth stating right now that Hermaeus Mora is not a good guy. He would entertain any crime, any action, any cruel trick to gain what he desires. It is for this reason that he remains untrusted by many, especially when one considers his close association with Mephala, the Daedric Prince of secret murder and lies, a great spirit of betrayal. To the ancient Atmorans, he was Herma Mora, a demon who nearly seduced those men into becoming Oldma. Such a tale is of Isgrimor when hunting in an Atmoran frostwood. But the stag was canny and quiet, and passed as a mist over the snow, so that Isgrimor did again and again sight it and lose it. For the sighing of the woeful bowstring made more sound than did the white stag. When again he lost the trail and stopped, sore vexed, and hare did appear and spoke, saying, The stag heeth down into yon vale. How knoweth you this? demanded Isgrimor of the hare, which replied, I know, for I have long ears. Ye had you ears as long as mine, you too could hear your prey wherever it went. Would then, said Isgrimor, that my ears were as long as thine. At that the hare's nose did twitch, and Isgrimor felt his ears begin to grow and point. But a fox did leap from the coppice and fall upon the hare, slaying it. And Isgrimor, in wonder, felt his ears dwindle to their wonted size. And the fox spake, saying, Know thou, mortal, that I am sure. And this was nary hare, but indeed Herma Mora, who did nearly trick thee into becoming of elven kind. Rely you hereafter, mortal, upon the forthright methods of man, and eschew the tricks of elves, lest ye become one. Now go, for the white stag awaiteth thee in the vale. This tale is a cautionary one, applicable to those who seek the scryer's secrets. The Prince of Fate may extend a hand, or rather, tentacle or claw, and offer all manner of benefit, blessing or power, but always beware. Because it seems the fine print is abysmally small, and the Daedric Prince of Knowing will commit all atrocity and devious trick to gain whatever it is his squalid, slimed heart desires. So knowing this, you can understand why at face value you should be at the very least cautious about the boons of Mora and what underlying consequences or collateral happenstances that they might entail. His power is clear, and his knowledge is vast. It was Mora who granted Xarxes the scribe of Auriel himself, the knowledge to create the Ogma Infinium, an unrivaled tome of power that can be manipulated to achieve abilities akin to that of a demigod. This librum of knowledge has been the go-to gift of Mora to those who serve him best, broken into three main sections, the path of steel, shadow, and spirit. The Ogma Infinium can deliver days, months, years of experience in mere moments of reading. However, once it's used, it disappears to be re-gifted years later to another lackey. 
We have seen many examples of its use without its readers going mad, but I would suggest that this is maybe because it was written by Xerxes. Xerxes, the elven god, created the artifact with knowledge granted to him by Hermaeus Mora, so perhaps this is why it does not send its reader mad. But once one gets a taste for the power granted to them in moments of reading such a tome, you can see how it may set them down the path of an unhealthy obsession with Mora's domain. And that leads us to the search for Apocrypha and the Black Books. Apocrypha, the infinite archives of Hermaeus Mora are the ultimate treasure. Its innumerable shelves and countless books carry the weight of all knowledge. Therein, the diligent reader can find all that was, all that is, and all that will be. Though however many cultists or aspiring seekers of truth praise the illumination of Mora, they cannot refute the fact that such enlightenment seems to result in utter madness, a state fit for Sheogorath's asylum. Such was the fate of Morian Zenus, who proclaimed by his apprentice was a master of conjuration, indeed a master at all the known and unknown schools. So we're not talking about your run-of-the-mill Mages Guild associate or hedge wizard. Morian Zenus explored the plains of oblivion, the desolate terrors of Cold Harbor, the blinding beauty of Moonshadow, the nightmarish realm of Quagmire, but it was when he arrived at Apocrypha that things went awry. The documentation of his apprentice in the book The Doors of Oblivion further explains the situation. Fear got the better of my master, and he quickly passed to the next realm. I heard him laugh. I feel like I'm at home now. Morian Zenus described to me an endless library, shelves stretching on in every direction, stacks on top of stacks. Pages floated on a mystical wind that he could not feel. Every book had a black cover with no title. He could see no one, but felt the presence of ghosts moving through the stacks, rifling through books, ever searching. It was Apocrypha, the home of Hermaeus Mora, where all forbidden knowledge can be found. I felt a shudder in my mind, but I could not tell if it was my master's or mine. Morian Zenus never travelled to another realm that I know of. Throughout his visits to the first four realms, my master spoke to me constantly. Upon entering the Apocrypha, he became quieter, as he was lured into the world of research and study, the passions that had controlled his heart while unknown. I would frantically try to call him, but he closed his mind to me. Then he would whisper, This cannot be. No one would ever guess the truth. I must learn more. I see the world, a last illusion's shimmer. It is crumbling all around us. I would cry back to him, begging him to tell me what was happening, what he was seeing, what he was learning. I even tried using conjuration to summon him as if he were a Daedra himself, but he refused to leave. Morian Zenus was lost. I last received a whisper from him six months ago. Before then, it had been five years and three before that. His thoughts are no longer intelligible in any language. Perhaps he is still an apocrypha, lost but happy. In a trap, he refuses to escape. Perhaps he slipped between the stacks and passed into the madhouse of Sheogorath, losing his sanity forever. I would save him if I could. I would silence his whispers if I could. So it is the case that a master wizard with vast intellect could not withstand the secrets burgeoning from the walls of books in the tentacled realm of Mora. Already, this is precedent enough to warrant fear in those who are thinking of following the same path, and lesser minds have surely braved the endless library of esoteric understanding only to suffer the same fate all the sooner. And this is all if you manage to actually read such secrets without being ripped apart by tentacle mandibles of seekers or the many tiny razored teeth of lurkers that dwell within the inky depths of Apocrypha's tides. But of course, getting to Apocrypha in the first place is the tricky thing, something reserved usually for those who actually have the magical skills or Daedric connections to get there. But there is another more accessible way to enter the domain of the Abyssal Cephaliarch, by reading the Black Books. As the Dragonborn on Solstheim in your quest against Mirak, you'll surely come across one of these large tomes bound in black covers bearing the sigil of Hermaeus Mora. These are the Black Books, the greatest of Mora's artifacts. They contain powers beyond the scope of the Ogma Infinium, secrets from the past, present, and future. Reading these esoteric tomes is no mere relaxed by the fire experience either. Emergent tentacles ensnare you and transport you to Apocrypha, or at least your soul 
soul is transported as a physical apparition of your body remains on Mundus. Here you must navigate the horrifying gauntlets of inky tentacles and Lovecraftian creatures to finally harness the true knowledge contained within the book. This may sound like a fine and dandy experience for a powerful individual, but don't be fooled, they are dangerous. During your travels on Solstheim, you may come across what can only be described as a madman, a radiant NPC who has been driven mad by a black book. He has all manner of insane ramblings about secrets and how no one will believe him. He says, the black book, it shoved them in there with black slick fingers. My fingers are too short, I can't get them out. Unfortunately, the most likely scenario is that this NPC goes mad and attacks you. But on his corpse, you may find the scribbles of a madman which read black slimy fingers, black slimy words, black slimy book, black like the back of my eyes, but darker. Get these things out of my head. This is a first hand experience of the effects of the black books. And you may think, well, he's just a normal Nord guy. But remember, Morian Zenus, master mage, with so much skill that he even impressed Divaith Fear. Eventually, even he went mad in the realm of Apocrypha. Even Neloth, a powerful Telvanni wizard, centuries old, is wary of their dangers. Clearly, spending any time in this realm exposes you to some level of mental danger, and the black books swallow your soul, taking you straight into the apocryphal gauntlets. Now, of course, in-game mechanics are going to protect you from going mad. You're just going to get the cool powers. But what about the long-term lore implications of the black books? The Dragonborn, at the very least, read one black book and became the new champion of Hermaeus Mora after Mirak's demise. But I think it's reasonable to assume that the Dragonborn sought out the rest of the black books hidden on Solstheim. If so, the books we know they read are Waking Dreams, Epistolary Acumen, Untold Legends, The Winds of Change, The Sallow Regent, Filament and Filigree, and The Hidden Twilight all contain different bits of esoteric knowledge and hidden power. And while in-game we can only physically read the first few lines, the books of course contain far more than that. And as an example of some of the potentially insanity-driving, existence-confronting texts, you could look at the black book, Waking Dreams. I quote, The eyes once bleached by falling stars of utmost revelation will forever see the faint insight drawn by the overwhelming question, as only the true inquiry shapes the edge of thought. The rest is vulgar fiction, attempts to impose order on the consensus mantlings of an uncaring godhead. The text we can read ends here. I wonder if by falling stars it could be alluding to the Middle Dawn, the longest dragon break to occur in history. In the first era, the Middle Dawn occurred, time broke, and all different cultures and individuals experienced contradictory events ranging from wild to plausible. But among all the different recounts of that period, there is only one common coinciding reported event. Quote from the book, Where Were You When the Dragon Broke? The council has collected texts and accounts from all of its provinces, and they only offer stories that never coincide, save on one point. All the folk of Tamriel during the Middle Dawn, in whatever when they were caught in, tracked the fall of eight stars, and that is how they counted their days. So to me, the falling stars of utmost revelation in the Black Book may be referring to the falling stars of the Middle Dawn. In the same Dragon Break book, in Manamarco's account, he says, as for myself, I was here and there and here again, like the rest of the mortals during the Dragon Break. How do you think I learned my mystery? The Marukati selectives showed us all the glories of the dawn, so that we might learn simply, as above, so below. What's interesting is that Manamarco says he learned his great mystery during the Middle Dawn Dragon Break, which falls in line with what the Black Book says. The eyes, once bleached by falling stars of utmost revelation, will forever see the faint insight drawn by the overwhelming question, as only the true inquiry shapes the edge of thought. So to explain more simply, by experiencing the middle dawn, or in more poetic words, to have your eyes bleached by falling stars of utmost revelation, he learnt from the glories of the dawn, as in the dawn era, simply as above, so below. This quote you may be familiar with in our real world, 
You might have seen it on a tarot card once. But there is a school of thought, a Western esoteric tradition called Hermeticism. Within it is contained many different principles, an important one being as above, so below. Which in its essence is explaining the idea that what goes on in higher planes of existence, as above, corresponds with what goes on in lower planes of existence, so below. So to translate this into Elder Scrolls terms, the outcomes in Mundus, the mortal plane, and the outcomes in the more ethereal spiritual planes, let's just call it the God's plane for sake of example, both correspond, meaning what a mortal does in their life will affect what happens to the gods. This principle could be taken to a literal extreme of butterfly effect proportions, or rather, it could be extrapolated to denote the importance of mythology. It shows how by worshipping or not worshipping gods affects their power, which in turn affects the ability of those gods to influence mortal affairs, as above, so below. If you erase the idea of Talos, for example, god of empire and men, then Talos will be less able to influence the world for the better of empire and men, so therefore they end up corresponding. It's a microcosm-macrocosm dynamic. Anyways, moving on to the rest of the black book, the text says, the rest is vulgar fiction, attempts to impose order on the consensus mantlings of an uncaring godhead. Now, if you're familiar in any way with our metaphysical discussions on the Elder Scrolls, well, then you may have heard me mention the idea that the entire universe exists within the mind or dream of an unknowable entity called the Godhead. Interestingly, this particular black book is also called Waking Dreams. Regardless, in typical understandings of Elder Scrolls metaphysics, when an individual comes to the great revelation about the Godhead, they essentially go one of two ways. They zero sum, which is to realize you're not real, you can't cope, and you rationalize yourself out of existence. The other is to achieve Kim, which is to, despite the existential truth, be able to maintain your sense of ego and maintain individuality. People have likened Kim to lucid dreaming, where you can exercise control over the dream, in this case, the universe, hence to be a god essentially. We could go deeper, but I think I'd derail the video, perhaps another time, but the reason I bring all of this up is to provide examples of the possible ramifications for reading the black books. Perhaps the overwhelming existential crises could lead you to zero sum, or perhaps the secrets contained within leave you hollow, unable to connect to those around you. Maybe you can't even perceive the world the same way you used to. Information can be dangerous, especially the deepest, darkest secrets of the universe that can ensnare you in untold amounts of existential dread and eldritch truth. You know what they say, ignorance is bliss. So back to the last Dragonborn, it truly is a possibility that they may go insane. As champion of Hermaeus Mora, he or she would have access to the vast libraries of Apocrypha, perhaps even more black books, and yes, he or she may be stronger than most. Perhaps their mind can withstand three, five, seven black books. But what about 13? What about 36? What if the quest to understand the Thorm, unlock more words of power lost to time, becomes all-consuming? Maybe they wish to learn more and more. Maybe this was Hermaeus Mora's plan, to have the most powerful and only Dragonborn left as his champion, a slave to his will, because the Dragonborn becomes comparable to a drug addict, crazed and willing to do anything to gain access to more black books and secrets. Personally, I would not be surprised if this truly was the fate of the Dragonborn. I mean, look at how Mirak was rewarded for his service. Look what Mora did to the Skarl. Even if one can withstand the terrible knowledge contained within the inked pages of the Black Books, can they withstand the addiction to such power? Ladies and gentlemen, I would warn you not to read the Black Books, for if you aren't set upon the path of insanity, then it may be a dangerous addiction that takes its place. Remember, the Daedra in essence are corrupting. Pick your poison wisely. Thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a like if you love the Black Books and Apocrypha. Subscribe for more beautiful Elder Scrolls lore. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.